Carl is taking a great deal of pride that he uh, beat you here. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know what, quite what to say about that. <laughs> and, I, he wore, and he wore a suit. You don't see that very often. I had to walk outside. He probably had a limousine, right? So uh, that's why I'm a little bit tardy. <laughs> I mean, would there, he said there'd be no other way for you guys to go into this Hall of Fame together. And because it didn't happen in the Pro Basketball Hall of Fame, it makes it even more special going into this one. Uh, we're pretty much connected at the hip, I think, uh, both emotionally and, and career-wise. So uh, that connection, is, is I, I'm glad to have it, thrilled to have it, and uh, it'll never change. I mean, you can't say Stockton without saying Ann Malone, right? Uh, that seems right to me. John, uh, along those lines, is you marvel about how you guys came here one year apart and stayed for 18 years? And Era of I do when I when I stop and look around at what's going on elsewhere. But uh, when I when I think back to our days here, there there were no other, there were no other options. Um, not that it wasn't possible to go elsewhere. Neither one of us were looking, and uh, we had a great situation. It's an absolutely great city, great organization, and, and we had wonderful teammates. So there was no reason to look anywhere else. John was talking about you know still working out a couple hours several times a week. I guess you're doing that too. Absolutely. I, I think about him when I'm in the weight room, too. And I, uh, back to the old days when we were playing, we would call each other at odd hours of the night and say, hey, are you working out, old man? And uh, th that's what I feel, even though we don't make the call anymore. How far off are you from your, from your playing weight? I'm um, same, same weight. Yeah, I, I, my goal is not to change that. And so, so body fat's still 4%. Of the yeah, I'd like that body fat to be the same. <laughs> I, I think I'm redistributing it, but I'm staying the same weight. How long do you work out, John? Um, it depends. Mostly I visit. Uh, I go in the weight room and visit, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I lift um, aluminum instead of lead. And uh, but it's it, it still works and it's still fun. John, or Carl said he could probably play 10, 15 minutes a night and get a lot of fouls. Do you think you could just still go? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure I couldn't guard the speedy guys out front, but I'm also sure that that Carl could. Uh, <laughs> He, he has the strength and the size and the talent. I, there's no question in my mind he could still get her done. What are, the, what are your favorite memories when you, when you think back of your days here? Uh, they're too memorable. They're, they're, there's too many of them. Uh, teammates are, I mean, I don't really, I haven't missed the playing part. That's the funny part. I, I played long enough, but what I miss are the teammates, the rides on the bus, the, the time in the locker room after games or after practices where you're shooting the breeze and, and uh, you know, sitting like a brotherhood in there, and, and that's what I miss. Is there anything, John, about about the game that's missing that was there when you guys played? Oh, I'm sure. I mean, there's the, the the league and the and the game has has an evolution. Some of it I, I appreciate and love, and some of it I don't like so well. But uh, they haven't asked my opinion, and and uh, so I think I'll, I'll keep it to myself for now. What do you think of the the point guards today? I mean, when you were in your prime against them, they're they're just they seem so much bigger uh, nowadays. Uh, can you compare the two eras? Well, everybody seems bigger now. I mean, we uh, even walking in and seeing Carl. You, you, uh, when I'm walking around the streets of Spokane, I I, I feel like a, a tall person, and then you come back into this world, and it's quite a bit different. Um, so I wonder sometimes how how any small small people manage. But but you see them out there, and you still see guys contributing and succeeding. And, so that part's fine. I hope they never change the rules so much that, that those kind of guys can't participate. What does Utah mean to you? I mean, when you, I mean this whole place, I mean, you don't live here anymore, but, but does this still feel like a second home even though you... No question. This is still home. I mean, we, y you can't beat where your family is. And my family's back home in Spokane, and, and that's where we moved back to, and I love it there. But uh, I miss it here. And this, uh, this was a home away from home, and probably even a little bit more special than that secondary part, maybe uh, associate homes. <laughs> Your sons say you still play. We've talked to them that they've grown up, and they say whenever you get in a pickup game, you still dominate play. Uh, no, I dominate play if I have better teammates than the other team. <laughs> then I'm okay. I can still I can still pass it to the right guys and uh, run up and down the floor a little bit. But I, I, I can't guard any of my kids anymore except for Samuel, who's only 11. And uh, they can certainly guard me with pretty much ease. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a frustrating turn of events. You swat Samuel's shot then? I mean, you got to show him who's boss. Right? No, no. Uh, Sam's, Sam has a wonderful personality and, and, and brings it out there. There's no need to, to get physical yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> what has it been like to be the parent of athletes and have them look, grow up as Stockton? Well, I, I think it's been a blast. I, the uh, We can't watch them take math tests. We can't watch them... Uh, practice for the choir, whatever it is that they participate, but we can see games. And uh, to be able to share that part of their lives with them and, and have some input, I, I, I managed to keep a little bit of credibility, at least in basketball for now, uh, so where, where we can talk about it instead of them ignoring what their parents typically say. But I, I've really enjoyed being part of their lives in that regard. Your son was quite uh, emotional when he was with the Jazz in the training camp and then playing with the Summer League. I, 
we really enjoyed it and talked highly about watching you play there and being a part of the Jazz organization, at least for a minute. M Michael has so thoroughly enjoyed every experience. Both, uh, from the time he was a child down here, he's, he's felt like one of the gang, and to have that opportunity to play with the Jazz this summer was, was one of the highlights of his life, and, and uh, you know, he's, I, I think he does a good job when he gets a chance. You talk a lot about your teammates and how, how fond you are of, of those <coughs> memories. Now you see a lot of them going into coaching. You see Ty going. You got Jeff here. Uh, do you get a little bit of the bug now that your kids are getting a little older and start thinking maybe this is, is something I can get back into? Uh, not just yet. Uh, as I mentioned, Sam's still 11. I have, uh, uh, what, four or five, five of, my, of our six kids are still playing. And uh, I, I don't, really don't want to miss that for anything. The, I enjoy watching them play. I enjoy watching them compete. And, I'm not eager to, to change that to where it's where those things aren't possible to see when you want to. What, what, what business-wise, what do you get? Are you involved in business other than your car dealership? Yeah, I'm, I'm involved in quite a bit of stuff. None of it's very exciting. Uh, <laughs> you know, wouldn't be worth most mostly it. Uh, I'm in things to to lose money, I think. But uh, but they are fun projects, and and I've enjoyed doing them. Did you go to Louisiana very often and train with Carl in the off season? Or no, did he never. Come to Washington? No, we never trained together until we, we uh, joined up back down here. Okay. What is your relationship like with Coach Sloan now? Do you guys still talk? Do you, can, you, can you imagine him getting back into coaching? Yeah, I could imagine him getting back into coaching. He, he, he's been doing that a long time, and, and he's been one of the very, very best ever to do it in this whole game for a long time. Uh, I think the break came, came at a good time, and uh, if he wants back in, I think somebody would be delighted to have somebody of his quality that, that cares about important things that, that will steer your team in the right direction, I think they'd have a heck of a coach. Do you sense that he still has that fire? I do. I, and I, the, the fire is hard to tell without looking him in the eye. We talk quite a bit by phone. Um, I know he'll, he'll make the choice that's, that, that's appropriate for him. If he gets an opportunity to coach a team that he would like and that fire, he, he used to talk about that going back home in the summer and he'd get his bare feet in the dirt in Illinois and, and uh, figure out whether he wanted to do it again. And, and, and it always came to him pretty clearly. How much credit do you give him for your Hall of Fame career, your time here in Utah? Tons. He, he's, he first started with Frank, of course. And then Jerry took the reins. And, and uh, I, I just think that, that we, we bond, I guess, intellectually about the game. The things that are important to him were important to me. And, and the things that he was able to teach me over years not only helped me succeed, but helped our, our squad uh, reach levels I don't think people could have ever imagined around here.